And I am the Irish guy and lad. Strikers are so important in football. Obviously, and to prove it in today's video, I'm going to see what the Premier League table would look like if, if, if. And bear with me because this is weird. If every team has to replace their current striker with their most expensive ever one. Here's the rule though. They can't still be at the club. They can't still be contracted to your club in any way. Not even out on loan. So no, you can't pick Lukaku for Chelsea. This is the most expensive striker your club has ever bought. Who has since left the club. And so under these rules, your manager would have to play the current version of that player. For every minute of every Premier League game this season. So let's just see. So let's just see how out of date some of these centre forwards are. Some are going to be retired teddy bears with the stamina of an obese pig. Right, let's go. 20th Luton Town, Adam Boyd. Poor little Adam Boyd. Trying to find expensive strikers in Luton's history. It's a bit like trying to find attractive people at a Millwall game. Instead, they probably all just looked like a set of Shaun of the Dead. This is embarrassing for Luton. Ah, oh, it's a bit like a normal bloke turning up to a Hollywood dinner party and having his bank account exposed in front of multi-millionaires. Luton have not chucked around big cash in the past. They've barely had enough dough to afford porridge in their fridge. So yeah, their most expensive ever strikers outside of their current players is Adam Boyd, who they signed from Hartlepool in 2006 for £500,000. Yeah, he retired nine years ago at Bishop's Auckland. He scored one goal in 18 matches for Luton in the championship. Right now, I'd imagine he spent the last decade eating pies, muffins, and now probably works at Pizza Hut. If Rob Edwards was forced to pick him up front every single match, instead of Carlton Morris, Oh, zero goals. He'd have the fitness levels of the cookie monster on a treadmill. I promise you, at every Luton Town home match, there's probably about 30 to 40 different men in the crowd who right now would be a better player than Adam Boyd. Luton would be the lowest scoring team in Premier League history with about 15 pathetic goals. At his peak, he wasn't good enough for the championship. So at 41, with a beer belly and the pace of a flea, Oh no! 19th, Sheffield United at least Musse. Yeah, Sheffield United's three most expensive strikers of all time are in their current squad. But the next one down the list is Lise Musse. When they paid Bournemouth an astonishingly stupid £10 million for him in 2019, he was never much good at the Blades, but now, at just 27 years old, he's turned into a Snoop Dogg-esque bad boy. He was signed by Bundesliga side VFL Bochum last summer never played for them and was suspended in January for repeatedly turning up the training late and having a garbage out of shoot. So clearly he's got the ego of James Corden. This is the sort of stuff Nile Ranger is getting in trouble for at 18. Yeah, this guy is nearly 30. Last season he was banished on loan to Olympic Nimes to help them get relegated to the French second tier. Oh, he's just a hopeless brat asking Paul Heckingbottom to chuck him up front all season long. Lads, if you just delete that one 14 goal season for La Havre during the 15-16 season, just pretend that never happened. Then this is a 27 year old centre forward with just 13 career goals 13 relegation the only reason i don't have the rock bottom is because luton would have to pick someone who's been eating hamburgers for breakfast since 2014 18th nottingham forest brit asabalonga in this scenario nottingham forest would be a massive trouble their most expensive striker outside of their current ones is brit asabalonga who they signed from peterborough in 2014 for eight million pounds and for years the man was a consistent 15 goal a season hitman in the championship but he's currently 30 plays for antaliasport in turkey where really the manager is nuri sahin what, the former real madrid and liverpool midfield flop i would imagine that by now asabalonga is just an fit beef burger who's completely lost his goal scoring touch i mean two limp strikes for watford in the championship last season i think if steve cooper was told he had to pick him for every single match instead of taiwa owani oh it'd be a bit like when your mum forces you to hang out with that weird cousin who drools in his food sorry forest but relegation with asabalonga wheezing like a claustrophobic hippopotamus 17 bournemouth bellicophobia weird this is two Dr. Congo international strikers in a row. Who's next on the list? Cedric Bakambu? Lamana Lua Lua? But I don't want to be mean here because I have tipped Andoni Iriola to be a spectacular Bournemouth coach. And I once talked to Bedekafobi on the phone many years ago. That was weird. But lads, he was once an England underage gold machine who had hype in the Arsenal Academy. He was on the books for 14 years. Back in 2009, it wasn't just Cesc Fabregas, Barcelona, or Stifik around. Their scouts were watching a phobie too. Instead, he's gone on to play for Huddersfield, Reading, Bolton, Millwall, Sheffield Wednesday, MK Dons, Wolves, Bournemouth, Wolves again, Stoke, Bristol City, Travis Bonspor, Millwall again, Hatta Club in Dubai, and now Al Dafra in Abu Dhabi. Lads, the Cherries bought him for £10 million in January 2016. He was a five goal a season striker in the Premier League for a couple of years, then was sold back to Wolves when they got promoted in 2018. Yeah, a week later, they just sold him to Stoke. He was just used as a quick pawn to make it easy 2 million quid. How cruel was that? So I feel bad for a phobie. Well, let's be real. Dominic Solanke is Bournemouth's main source of goals. So replacing him with a 30-year-old. Way past his best of phobie. Sorry, lads, but 17th and just 
staying off. 16th, Brighton, Jurgen Lukadia. Imagine having Jao Pedro, Evan Ferguson, and Danny Lubbock at your disposal and not be able to pick any of them for even one minute all season long. Instead, he forced to Jurgen Lukadia onto the pitch 38 times in a row. Lads, how Brighton ever paid PSV 50 million pounds for him in 2018? I'll never know. People hail the Brighton scouts, but during that summer, I can only assume they were all suffering from insomnia because this guy, some fella who's a part-time DJ, is hilariously bad at football. Three goals in 35 games for Brighton, just four goals on loan in Hoffenheim, just two goals on loan in FC Cincinnati. Oh, like Musse, he was also chucked away to VFL Bochum. The guy wasn't suspended though, so at least he's not an entitled mini just a beaver. He since played in Persia with Persepolis, where to be fair he scored six and nine, but now at 29 plays in China for Kangsu Mighty Lions. Let me guess. Their president has a tattoo of Mufasa on his neck. Lacadia is an absolute garbage footballer. So can you imagine the chance after chance that Brighton would create? Only for this fellow to spoon it over the bar. It would be a season of complete embarrassment. He'd scored maybe four goals all season long. This guy was supposed to be the future of the Holland national team. Instead, he since declared for Curacao, a Caribbean island where you could probably fit the entire population on a Ryanair plane. 15th, Burnley Chris Wood. Look, Chris Wood does not really suit Vincent Company's style of football. No, he's a six foot three mountain. But he's the first striker in this list that's actual Premier League quality. Don't get me wrong, he's clinging onto that status with his fingernails at Forest. But lads, this former 50 million pound buy for Burnley from Leeds in 2017 was just one goal shy of 50 Premier League goals for the Claret. They know that he knows where the back of the net is and he's an international superstar well um new zealand lads that nation is mental it's a place where there's more sheep than people lads that nation is so sportingly unbalanced to put it in context wood is a soccer superstar in new zealand right yeah if he was as good at rugby as he is at football, he wouldn't have even made a school team. And would probably now just be a depressed beach lifeguard. Anyway, yeah, he'd score about eight goals to keep Burnley up. 14th, Wolves Raul Jimenez. Lads, I have Wolves remarkably high in this list, but again, like Wood, Raul Jimenez is not brilliant, but it's just about Premier League quality. Despite the fact he hasn't scored about 7,000 years, well, lads, he's a regular Mexico international centre forward. When compared to a Fobi, Musse, and Boyd, then this guy looks like prime Benzema. Listen, it would be a slog for Wolves if they were forced to pick him up front every single match. They'd only score about 30 goals all season long with Jimenez weighing in with maybe four I mean this fella is terrified to even win a header understandably by the way he's like one of those poor traumatized souls who survive a saw trap but yeah a grim 14 only staying up thanks to the hideousness below them in the list 13th Crystal Palace Christian Mateke imagine inflicting Christian Mateke on Crystal Palace fans again just when they thought they were finally free of his inconsistency after six long years a 27 million pound buy for Liverpool in 2016 he started strongly with a 17 goal season but soon petered off went nearly a year without a goal all on 100 grand a week. He since moved to the MLS, and to be fair, 13 goals for DC United this season, and playing under an absolute megastar like Wayne Rooney. He's done well in America, but I don't know. I guess Roy Hodgson likes him after repeatedly picking him for four years, to be fair. And you know what? Before Hodgson retired, in their last season together, Venteke had a 10 goal campaign. He had a one in three goal return. That was actually quality. I think he'd do okay, you know. He just replaced John Mateta, who's hardly a goal machine himself. And yeah, he'd just be the physical focal point for attacking talent like Michael Olise and Eberaki Etty to play off. Yeah, I think Palace would be fine. Well, Everton for Charleston. Finally! Lads, how has it taken eight different clubs to come across a Premier League team who'd actually like their most expensive striker back? Here we've got Everton, having paid a bonkers £40 million to Watford for Richarlison back in 2018. And to be fair, I know he's had a shocker for the goal at Spurs. Well, He's Brazil's number nine. In what world is Sean Dyche ever going to say no to a Brazil international striker? Yes, he looks like he's probably a creepy Neymar stalker, but he regularly hit double digits for Everton every single season. At 26 years old, of course, Everton would have him back. Chuck, the injury ravaged Dominic Cabot Lewin in a bin. And yet, Richarlison would love being a big fish in a small pond again and probably scored 12 goals with Jack Harrison and Dwight McNeil providing crosses from the wing. I think it would click. 11th Tottenham, Roberto Soldado. And now we're back to a set of supporters biting off their own face. At the mere mention of the most expensive striker returning to the club, Roberto Soldado, a £30 million panic buy from Valencia in 2013. To be fair, I know he was off the back of a 30-goal season in Spain, but he was a hideous bloated beanbag in a Tottenham shirt. To be fair, though, it is lucky that he turned out to be a flop, because imagine if Spurs had signed Benteke instead, and he had a couple of 20-goal seasons back when he was good. Yeah. Tottenham would have probably sold Harry Kane to someone like Leicester or Norwich. Anyway, Soldado played football for another 10 years after the £30 million move, but his confidence was destroyed. He never hit double digits in a single league season ever again, not for Villarreal, Fenerbahce, Granada or Levante. He just retired this summer after two goals in 25 matches in the Spanish second tier. I mean, bring him out of retirement now at 38 and make him the focal point of Ange Ball. It would be like playing with 10 men. If Postacoglu shoves Son back out to the wing, then yeah, he would score enough to finish my table and sneak above Everton. But it would be a mess. 
This guy can't run. 10th Man City, Sergio Aguero. After Erling Haaland, how is Sergio Aguero still the most expensive striker Man City have ever bought? They paid £38 million pounds to take it from Atletico Madrid 12 years ago. I honestly thought the answer was Wilfred Boney, and I wish it was, because he's now a washed up teddy bear. I mean, he was tipped to be the next drug at Swansea. Yeah, he's now playing for Always Ready in Bolivia. After spending last Christmas playing for Newport County under 18s. Oh, stuck in a dressing room of wealth children playing TikTok on their phones. He'd have just looked like someone's grand dad reading a newspaper in the corner. Listen, prime Sergio Aguero would slot into the City team with ease and they'd win the treble again. But 35 year old Aguero, who's forced to retire after four games of Barcelona, lads, he has a heart issue. He physically cannot sprint. Having to show up this world superstar into the City team, it would be like playing with 10 men. He can't run. At all. City would be replacing a 50 gold megastar like Haaland with a guy who literally has to walk slowly around the pitch. This would defy all health protocols. You'd have doctors protesting in the stadium. His city teammates would flinch every time he gets the ball. And considering Haaland can't play on the wing, then the gold bird would fall on Julian Alvarez and Jack Grealish. I promise you, there's not enough goals in the rest of the team. They'd finish 10th because the goal machines they had pre Haaland, like Riyad Mahrez, Raheem Sterling, and Ilkay Gundogan, they've all gone. And now they're built around Haaland scoring all the goals. This whole weird experiment would be so uncomfortable to watch. I feel like watching a 99 year old grandmother hobbling down an escalator on one leg. Ninth as the villa Danny Ings. Look, on paper, Danny Ings would be a like for like swap with Ollie Watkins. It only feels like five minutes ago that Ings looked like he had 25 million pound replacement for Ollie. Yeah, since that move from Southampton, Watkins' career has gone like that. Ings' career has gone like that. He's currently stuck on just three goals for West Ham and is now just given three minute cameos off the bench. Peak Ings would be a monster. Monster, but now at 31, I think injuries have caught up with his body because he's now more threatening than a Pikachu toy. If Unai Emery had to drop Watkins for Ings all season long, yeah, he'd have chances put on a plate for him from the wings. Yeah, and he probably would score about 10 goals. But Watkins has scored 20 since Christmas, so it would be a, a huge downgrade. A week ninth, eighth Liverpool Andy Carroll. Look, Liverpool have proven this season they can cope with 10 players on the pitch. Which is just as well because here, they'd have to pick Andy Carroll every single week. A 35 million pound panic buy for Newcastle in 2011. How is he still the most expensive striker outside of the current ones? Yes, he did cost more than Firmino. To be fair, he's not actually retired, but he might as well be. He's in the French second tier with Amiens FC. There's a man who has admitted that he doesn't care about football so much that when he joined Liverpool, he had to Google who Luis Suarez was. He said the only two Liverpool players he'd heard of were Gerard and Carragher. Yeah, good luck out in Paris, Andy C. Can you imagine this version of him in Klopp's system? He's not gonna press. He's not gonna score. Again, he probably won't know who any of his teammates are outside of the obvious ones. It would be hilarious to watch. This Jordy horse tripping over his own feet. The likes of Salah and Diaz would be so frustrated trying to link up with this human mountain. Oh, it would be a disaster. Andy Carroll's whole career is about heading crosses chucked into the box. Salah doesn't cross the ball. Him and Diaz play with the ball on the deck. This would be like playing with 10 men. But the difference between them and City is that Liverpool have a lot more goals coming from the wings. A lot more. Seventh, Fulham, Alexander Mitrovic. Well, this is easy. If Fulham had not sold Alexander Mitrovic for £50 million this summer, if you were still at Craven Cottage, then under these rules, I'd be giving you a 49-year-old Steve Marley, and you'd be relegated. But Fulham finished top half last season with Mitrovic in the team, and that's when the league was played under normal rules, when everybody had a top striker. So in this freakish system, where you've got clubs weighed down by retired beard belly trolls, oh yeah, an easy top seven finish. Sixth, Arsenal, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. This smells of a disaster. Lads, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, the 60 million pound Arsenal buy from Borussia Dortmund, is now 34 years old, has zero goals in seven league on games for Marseille, was kicked out of Arsenal for falling out with Mikel Arteta, has since failed at Chelsea, so dragging this problem child back to the Emirates and forcing Mikel Arteta to pick him. It would be so awkward. Nobody would want this. No one. Arteta would probably feel like quitting, having to pick this prima donna all the time. When both men clearly hate each other, it would completely disrupt the harmony in the dressing room. Room. Oh, it would be horrible. Not to mention, Aubameyang can no longer score in the Premier League. Just six goals in his last 35 Premier League matches. This would be like when Arsenal kept finishing eighth when he was in the team. Just awful. Fifth, Brentford, Ollie Watkins. Brentford have landed on their feet. Can you imagine, in this format, being able to pick Ollie Watkins? Who, thanks to add-ons, yeah, they signed him from Exeter City for 1.5 million pounds in 2017, but the add-ons have taken that to closer to 7 million. And yeah, give Thomas Frank the chance to pick an in-form razor-sharp Watkins. Oh, he'd be a beast. Easily replacing Ivan Tony and scoring 20 goals again. And yeah, in this weird league of misfit strikers, I think Brentford would sneak above Arsenal by a point. But yeah, Watkins would have to continue playing out of his skin. Fourth, Newcastle, Chris Wood. Yeah. In this system, 
We've got two Chris Woods. Newcastle fans will be moaning about the return of Wood, right? But lads, if you had not given Burnley a crazy 20 million pounds for him, then under these rules, you'd be having to pick a 43-year-old Michael Owen up front. Lads, he was finished in 2009. Can you imagine how weak his hamstrings are now he's 43? The guy has been eating cookies and cheeseburgers since retiring 10 years ago. So suddenly chuck him in Eddie Howe's fast-paced football now. It'd be like throwing Susan Boyle on an exercise bike. He'd be playing 38 games this season with torn hamstrings. To a point where his legs would turn purple after a month. But luckily, the answer here is would to be fair yeah i know he's a huge downgrade on isaac and wilson but he can do a job don't forget he started 19 games for newcastle in the premier league during those 19 games newcastle picked up 40 points from a possible 57 so wood can play eddie howe football yeah he'd score about nine goals all season mostly penalties but yeah, third West Ham Sebastian Haller. I don't think West Ham should have sold Sebastian Haller. Yes, he was a slow starter after a 45 million pound move from Eintracht Frankfurt in 2019. But he since went on to bang in 47 goals in 66 games for Ajax. And has done okay at Borussia Dortmund too. He ended last season with a spurt of 8 goals and 6 assists in the last 10 Bundesliga matches during the title running. And he's since scored a load of goals in the Champions League too. At 29 years old, I don't see why this Ivory Coast International couldn't do the job that Michael Antonio was doing. And do it better as well. This guy is a handful. And don't forget, he's got spectacular technique. I think in this weird freak league than an inform Haller would have a 15 goal season, be a perfect foil with Jared Bowen. I think this talented West Ham squad with Haller as the goal machine. Yeah, third, second Chelsea of Barata. This is a shout. Alvaro Morata was a stinking Chelsea flop. A £60 million disaster buy from Juventus. I mean, don't forget, Lukaku is still contracted to Chelsea, so I can't pick him. But was Morata that bad? In his debut season, he scored 15 goals. He got a hat-trick against Stoke, and the winner gets Man United, so he wasn't a complete mess. He's 30 years old, and has since had 15 goal and 20 goal seasons for Juventus and Atletico Madrid. He's currently got five in five in Liga games this season. He is in red-hot form. He's actually had a remarkably consistent career all his life, from the Real Madrid B team until now. He's usually always ended every single season in and around 15 goals, even at Chelsea. So yeah, a 15 goal a season striker at Stamford Bridge right now in this format. Think of the chances that Pochettino's men would create for him. I'm going to go with second. First, Man United Romelu Lukaku. It shows how wonky this list is that I have tipped Man United to win the league, giving them their 75 winning power Romelu Lukaku back, who, guess what, like Ronaldo, doesn't really press. This player should not work for Eric Den Hag ball, but you know what? In this weird league format, they tweak the system to make it work. Lukaku is still a goal threat. Like Murata, even when people think he fails, he still winds up at 15 goals a season. Like at Inter Milan last season, or Chelsea the season before, or even in his final season at Man United, when under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, everyone liked to pretend he was a hopeless teddy bear. Even when he fails, he scores 15 goals a season minimum. So replace Rasmus Hoyland with a 30-year-old Lukaku. And yeah, under these rules, the bloke would win the Golden Boot with 25 goals, and they'd win the league with 90 points. Easy. Anyway, next video, let me know what do you think? Let me know in the comments. How do you think it would go? Let me know if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give a like, as always. I'll talk to you in a while.